Sometimes writing feels like a contest. If you're feeling like this, well, you're not alone. In the contest of writing a great novel, how long does an average novel take? Really? How long? I have to wait. I'm Morgan. Oh, this is Molly. And I'm Teresa. And I'm scared to know how long the average novel takes to complete. <laughs> I'm just, the engineer brain in me is kicking in. And it's like, what about all those people who never complete? Like, mm. do we count them as like infinity? Like 97% of all novels that get started don't get completed. So those of us who finish one, what's our average? At a, and and as you, those of you who are engineer brains out there, we're calculating for a 90,000 word novel. I was going to talk about, you know, to get to the end, we have to start because, you know, Morgan mentioned, you know, 97% of people who start novels don't finish them. How many more people do you know who have ideas for novels, but don't even start them? They oh. don't even know where to start, how to dig into things. And the fundamental building block for writing is a scene, right? So something happens in a place with characters right? It describes something like it's something happens and it can be really daunting. So we're going to talk today about like the three things you need at a first draft. Like we're going to go deep into details on some of these other things later, but when you're first starting, you're, you're approaching your writing on your first draft level, what do you need in your scene? And there's three things, Teresa, you want to kick off. What is thing one that people need? So three, three parts of your scene. Three things you need to establish in the beginning. You need to establish who your point of view character is. Okay, so who's telling the story in this scene? And it might be, yes, go ahead. I was going to say, like, you you don't have to worry about this if your whole book is from the same perspective. <laughs> exactly. But if you're bouncing heads and you're mm -hmm. going between people, better not give your reader vertigo. Exactly, exactly. And it's also that's a really important thing to establish, because what you don't want with modern writing is what's called head hopping, where you jump from different characters, uh, point of views in the same sentence, a lot of times in the same paragraph. Yeah, don't don't do that. Just... Yeah, we don't do that. But who who's telling the story? Which one of your characters is telling the story? You need to know that at the beginning of writing the scene. Okay. You need to know where is this scene? Number two, you need to know where is this scene? Is it in a library? Is it in somebody's home? Is it in a restaurant? Is it in a car? Uh, is it on a spaceship? Is it in a treehouse? Where is this scene? And then the other thing you need to establish is how much time has passed before between the previous scene and this one. So has it been a couple of hours? Has it been a couple of minutes? Has it been years that have gone by? So Teresa's giving you great details. The fundamental point of this is you don't have to tell your reader all of those things in the very first sentence. You just have to give your reader enough, like she said, at the beginning to make it feel like they're not falling off in space somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like they're grounded somewhere. They're not too confused. They can be, they can have questions. You can let your readers have questions in a scene, but they can't be so confused that they put the book down. All right, you guys. So I want to give you an example of how to start a scene. Okay. So this is from, um, this is from my upcoming book. It's called uh, Lying Gods and Fandoms. Um, and this just shows you who's going to be telling the um, the scene, and then where they are. So this is the first line. <clears throat> this is a, an exclusive sneak peek to our listeners. Cato pulled into the auto detailing center where Jonathan waited for him. Who's the point of view character? Cato. Cato. Where are we? The auto center at, in a car. At, well, he's in a car. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. I didn't say he's a car. I didn't say, you know, the point of view character is going to be Cato, but you already have an image, right? You have an image of this character. He's driving into an auto detailing place and there's someone standing there waiting for him. And, and something else I want to say here, like oftentimes as writers, especially in our first drafts, we get obsessed with finding the perfect sentence 
and the perfect flow and the perfect, beautiful imagery and language in something. Don't let that stop you from writing your first draft. Sometimes, especially if you're writing a longer book, you're going to have a lot of scenes. And, you know, the most important thing is that your scene starts. And if you want to come back later and do something else and change the way your scene starts or add more, not drama, but, but, you know, more finesse, you can do that later. But don't let that stop you from writing your scene now. In a scene, you need to be seen. So number two is that we need to bring purpose to our scene. So a lot of times you're in the middle of your book, you've got a great idea for an intro, you're headed and you know where you're going, but there are these like gaps. And so you head into these chapters and they end up kind of being a dead chapter. And you thought they were such a great idea. And then you get into the scene and you're feeling kind of like, Oh, nothing is happening. So let me give you a couple of guiding questions to make sure your scene is working. So first, make sure that your point of view character has clearly what they want. So they're going into it, they have what they want, and then they need to have some kind of conflict or tension. So something's pushing against what they want in that scene. Just like in the whole novel, we want to make sure that something is happening that's like causing conflict or tension against that, that goal of that scene. So the scene itself has a goal, then there's conflict or tension, and then the character either gets what they want and it's not what they thought, or it blows up in their face. So they they work through the conflict and then it's disaster and ends up disaster. They It slips away and they don't get it. I, I think it can be hard at times, you know, you're writing and you're writing um, stream of consciousness or you're writing because you saw a scene in your head and you thought that it was beautiful or you loved the character interaction. And that's great and that's wonderful. But like Morgan is saying, how does it fit into your story overall? Why is this scene here? What does it do for the purposes of your character or the plot, right? What purpose does it serve? And really asking yourself exactly like Morgan is saying, like, you know, how does this change my character? Does my character have clear motivation? Does there tension? Is this working them to some goal? That can help you. And I'm going to tie it into our previous episode. Where's the emotion? So tie that piece into it as well. And that keeps it from feeling kind of flat. Because even if you have explosions happening, characters fighting, if if there's not a lens to kind of internalize it, it doesn't grab the reader and pull them in. Because we want to root for something. And so the way we know who to root for is how the character's feeling. Yeah, I think another way that Morgan's, another way to phrase what Morgan's saying is there is a difference between action and function Mm -hmm. or purpose um as we've been saying so just because you have action on in the page in a scene does not mean that scene is serving a purpose you can have meaningless action all day long doesn't mean it's helping your story along if you don't connect with the characters connect with the plot connect with the emotions of your reader it maybe isn't serving a purpose and either you know, needs to serve a purpose or needs to be gone. And a great example of this is a lot of times you see early writers detailing from the very beginning, character waking up, character getting dressed, character running to the restroom, character walking down the stairs. There's action, but there's no purpose to it. And then the readers are like, oh, nothing's Mm -hmm. happening. (laughs) So before we get into tip three on what your scene is, we want to remind you that it's December. December is an awesome time, but it's the end of our race to rejection. Ooh, that sounds fancy. What's that? Competition, competition. You gave, you, you told people this was going to happen, Morgan. Tell us about the race to rejection. All right. So the race to rejection, jump on our discord and get excited because 2024 is here and we're about to announce our 2023 winners. In the race to rejection, we understand that publishing is about hard knocks and we've all had way too many. So as a community, we celebrate every submission and we really get excited about rejections. And we have the most incredible group of writers who are submitting as fast as they can, racing to the end because... The end of 2023 will bring a champion 
who gets the most rejections. And we are going to celebrate them because you don't get acceptances without rejection. And we need to learn to embrace that and celebrate each other and be proud of people for submitting. So if you're like me, and you're scared to query because it made you nervous and you you're you don't like the rejection. The race to rejection is for you. It gets you in the process of submitting. It gives you a group of people to root for you and it gets you out in the game, remembering that, you know, we're all going to get rejection, but that doesn't mean we can't celebrate the process because we're one step closer to our acceptance. And an update on the 2023 race to rejection. Oh. We've got two people battling for the lead right now. It is between Richard and KJ Shepard. And no. they are one rejection apart. Are they? I knew they were close. I didn't They're know. They're one were apart. Oh, wow. As of this recording, they are one apart. And those those two, like, they get rejections in constantly. So this could and it's constantly changing. And acceptances, and acceptances too. They both yep. had we acceptances don't count this those, year. We don't count those dirty acceptances when they're out getting published and famous and stuff. No, no, we celebrate we those too. We celebrate those too. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. But <laughs> so, here's the interesting thing. KJ was our winner last year. So the is question he is, dethroned? will he yeah. be dethroned? Yeah. Richard. Oh, let's we'll see. have to wait and see. I'm nowhere near the top. But I'm on there. I'm on there and I tried hard. And back to the content. You've been for the third thing that your scene needs at this point, right? It needs a beginning. It needs a purpose. And this probably isn't a surprise. It needs an end Mm -hmm. to figure out where do I end my scene? How do I end my scene? And so you get the inverse of what Teresa was talking about earlier. You get scenes that like, And then she curled up on the sofa with a book and she read for 30 minutes and then she ran a bath and then she sat in the bath and then she got cold and then she got out of the bath and she tiled off and then she like, you're not the paparazzi. You don't have to follow your character around and record every single thing that they do. Once the scene has fulfilled the purpose that you needed it to fulfill you can end your scene. You don't have to, right? And you can end it even in the middle of dialogue, right? The thing has happened that you needed to have happened. It's okay to like end it. If you're, if you're having moments and I've had many of these where you're sitting there, I'm like, oh, I don't know how to end this scene. That means the scene's over. And you can find that perfect line, that perfect hook transition to get into the next scene, right? Because that's the purpose of the end of the scene is you need to propel your reader to the next one. You want them to read your next scene. You want you don't want them to put down the book. You want them to continue to read. Um, so that's, you'll hear um, the piece of writing advice, never end your chapter with a character going to sleep. That's why that piece of writing advice exists. It's whether it's good or bad, that's why it exists. It's because it's trying to get you to propel your readers into the next scene. But the thing to remember here is you are writing a first draft. End the scene, finesse it later. That's the most important thing. End the scene so you can write the next scene so that you can finish your book. Because Morgan, how long does it take people to finish books? It takes... 475 hours approximately to write a 90,000 page um, paper, uh, novel. And that's just the rough draft. So it's not any of the pre-planning or the finishing. It's just the rough draft. And that is approximately 189 words an hour. Wow. So if you want to set some hourly goals, you can do 189 words an hour focused on your purpose. And then when it comes to that ending, you could also ask a couple of questions like, how can I give my readers a question that'll cause them to move to the next um, chapter? How can I introduce a new tension or a new problem for the character that won't get resolved until the next chapter? So now that you know how to write your chapter, you can jump in to writing your first draft. So we're going to have some more videos about writing your first draft, some tips that we have, um, 
in the next few weeks. And then, of course, as we're going through this, we'll have more and more videos about subsequent phases. So stay tuned. Let us know where you stop. If you don't finish your book or if you take longer, let us know why. Let us know what happens, what your pitfalls are, and then hopefully we can make a video, address it. We're here to help. First draft or bust. Woo! <laughs> All right. So why are you still here? Go right. Go right. Yay! Is that okay? We're in, we're out. We're up and we're down. We're in and we're out. Yes. Hot we're and we're cold. <laughs> yes.